The materials I used for this pattern are a weight 4 acrylic yarn, a 7mm crochet hook, and a tape measure. This cardigan is made to measure so you can swap out different sized crochet hooks and different sized yarns if you would like. So starting off with my 7mm hook, I will make a magic ring or a magic circle. To do that, I will take my yarn, grab it with my thumb, wrap it around my two fingers, and form an X on the top of my two fingers. It doesn't have to be super tight. Then I will put my hook under the first piece of yarn, pull under, and pull through, and then I'll chain two more for an initial chain of three. So this initial chain of three will count as my first double crochet. So now I will do two more double crochets into the middle of the circle. One, and two. So now you'll have a cluster of three double crochets, again with that first chain three counting as our first double crochet. Now we'll chain one and do it again. So I'll do a cluster of three double crochets into the ring. So this initial chain three will count as our first double crochet. So now I will yarn over and double crochet two more times into the circle. So now I have a cluster of three double crochets with that first chain three counting as the first double crochet. So now I will chain one and double crochet three more times into the circle. Now I have two clusters of three. I'll chain one, and I'll do another cluster of three double crochets into the circle. I'll keep going with a chain one in between each cluster until I have a total of six clusters of double crochets. All right, so I just finished my sixth cluster of double crochets. So now I will chain one, find the top of the chain three, and slip stitch into it. So now we have our circle formed. I'll go ahead and grab the string in the back and pull it to cinch everything together. Now I'll chain three And in that spot right underneath the chain three, I'll do a cluster of two more double crochets. To form our first cluster of three double crochets with that first chain three counting as our first double crochet. Now without chaining, I'll go into our next spot, which is right here, and I'll do a cluster of three double crochets. Now that I have three double crochets, I'll chain one and do another cluster in the same space of three double crochets. This will form our first corner.
now I have a cluster of three, chain cluster of three in that same space. Now without chaining, again, I'll find my next space and I'll do a cluster of three double crochets. I'll chain one and do another cluster of three double crochets in the same spot. So I'll keep doing this in each space that I come to. You'll do three double crochets, chain, and then three more double crochets in each space. So I just finished this last corner. So now without chaining, I'm going to go in and finish the corner that we started on. So I'll yarn over and do three double crochets into the space that we started in. So now because we're in a corner, I'm going to chain one and then slip stitch into the top of that very first chain three. So now we're starting to form our hexagon. So now I'm going to chain three, go into that space right underneath and do two more double crochets to make our first cluster of three. So that's beginning our corner. Without chaining, I'm going to go into this first spot and I'm going to put three double crochets. So we won't be chaining at all between the side spots. The only time we're going to chain is when we're in the corner. So I just placed three double crochets. Now we're back at a corner, so I'm going to do three double crochets, chain one, and three more double crochets into the same space in the corner. Back to a side spot, I'll go into this space and I'll place three double crochets. Do another corner and I'll do cluster of three, chain one, cluster of three, and then in the side space, I will only do a cluster of three and I will just keep on doing that until I get back to the first corner we started with. So I just went all the way around and got back to the first corner we started in. I just finished my side space. So now I will yarn over, place three double crochets in this first spot to finish out this corner. Chain one and slip stitch into the first or the last rather stitch of that chain three. So this is our pattern. This is how we're going to continue. As you'll see, it's kind of starting to fold and lift a little bit. That's totally fine. Um, it will definitely do that as it gets bigger. So again, to start the next row, I'm going to chain three, go into that spot underneath, place two double crochets, and then go on to my side spaces where I will not be chaining. So just placing three double crochets in each side space and then cluster, chain, cluster in corner spaces. And that is the whole pattern for the body of the cardigan. 
So I'm going to just keep going around and around and I'll show you how to measure and figure out how large you would like it to be. So here I have the sleeve of a cardigan and I like the way that this one fits. So I'm using this to measure. So you'll take a cardigan or a sweatshirt, lay the sleeve flat and measure the length near the armpit. So this is about eight inches. So I will want one of my sides to be 16 inches. So I'm going to keep going around in this pattern until the sides are 16 inches long, and then I will meet you back and show you the next step. All right, so I kept going until I reached the measurement that I wanted. So I wanted about 16 inches. So I'm pretty close, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. So I'm going to finish off this corner the same way I've done all of them by slip stitching. So now I'm going to go ahead and continue my pattern, but I'm only going to do four rows. So I'll do one, two, three, and four, and then I'll stop on this corner. So only doing four rows, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so I just finished doing four sides. So I started off here. I went down one, two, three, four, and ended off finishing half of the corner on my fourth side. So now we're going to start our sleeves. So this is where we just left off. We're going to go to this corner in the corner where we started off and fold those together in that will form our sleeve so this is what it should look like so we're going to be working down these two sides to create our sleeve so to join them together I'm going to go in through the top so I'm going to find the corner, go in, and I'm going to slip stitch. So we're going to make sure that we keep this working yarn in the middle of these two sides no matter what. So next I'm going to finish off the corner that we started. So I'm going to place three double crochets in that corner. Next, I'm going to find the next open space on the other side, which is right here. And then I'm going to again go through the top and slip stitch. Then I'm going to go to the other side, find the next space, and do a cluster of three double crochets. Now to the other side, find the next space go in through the top and slip stitch and then again next space on this side three double crochets and you'll continue that pattern going back and forth until we get to the very end and I'll meet you back there so I'm close to the end here I have this corner left and then this is what the other side looks like so I'm gonna go into this space and again slip stitch then I'm going into the corner and I'll do three double crochets. And then to finish out, I'll go into the top of the first double crochet, so the top of the chain three, and I'm going to slip stitch. So this is what it should look like at this point. So we've got the top of the sleeve going here. And now we're going to start working on the length of the sleeve. So I'm going to chain three, go 
go into this space here and I'm gonna do a cluster of three double crochets with that first chain three counting as my first double crochet. So now I'm just going to continue the pattern and go into the next space and do a cluster of three double crochets. Now I'll go to the next space and again do a cluster of three double crochets. So I'm just going to do a cluster in every space that I come to all the way around and then I'll show you how to attach when you get back here and this is how we're going to continue our sleeve. So I've come to my last space before our initial cluster here. So I'm going to put a cluster in that space. Now I'm going to find the top of this chain three and slip stitch into it. And then chain three. And then do a cluster of two more double crochets to make our first cluster of three. And then I'm just going to keep going around the sleeve until I get to the length that I want. So you'll put a cluster in every space and then just slip stitch into the first cluster when you get back to it. And you can keep going and make the sleeves as long as you would like. I'll probably do about 12 or 13 more rows and then I will come back and show you how to either finish off the sleeve if you want to leave it wide or I'll show you how to decrease and then add a cuff. So I finished adding the amount of length that I want for my sleeve. So now I'm going to finish off my last cluster. I'm going to slip stitch. So now this is when you can make the decision of what style of sleeve you would like. So if you want to just keep it kind of flowy and open like this, you can just do a row of single crochet all the way around to finish it off. Or you could just tie off here if you like the look of it as it is. I'm going to do some decreases to cinch it and add a cuff, so I'll show you how to get started on that. So I'm just going to start with a single crochet. I'm going to place a stitch marker in my first stitch just so I don't get lost. It's optional though. And now I'm going to start my decreases. So I'm going to stitch two together and then one single crochet. And then again, I will crochet two together. I'll give you a better look on how to do that. So I'll go in one, pull through, then go in the next one pull through and then pull through all three loops and then again single crochet and then two together so I'll keep going around doing single crochet and then crocheting two together until I get back to this stitch and I'll meet you back there so I'm getting close to the end here continuing my pattern of single crochet and then crocheting two together. Once I get back to my stitch marker, I'm just going to place a slip stitch in this first stitch. So now again, you have the option of just tying off here. If you like the look of Again, a little bit of a wider sleeve with some cinch, or you can keep going with this pattern of single crochet and crocheting two together until it's as cinched as you would like and leave it like that. But again, I'm going to keep going and add a cuff. So to begin our cuff, I'm going to chain eight. You can chain as many or as few as you like. The actual number that you chain doesn't matter. We're just going by measurement here. So this is about how thick I want my cuff to be. So I chained eight. Next, I'm going to 
place a single crochet in the back loop of every one of these chain eight. I also want to note that when turning, I don't chain one. You totally can if you like to. I just prefer the look of it um, when I don't, but that's totally up to you. So now that I've reached the bottom, I'm going to decrease again. So just like we did before, I'm going to single crochet two together, turn my work, and I'm going to be going back up, but crocheting in the back loops only. So for this first stitch, that doesn't actually matter. You can just go straight into it. But then I will be going back up my chain, back loops only. So I'm back at the top and for this last stitch, it doesn't really matter if you do back loop only, you can just do a, a single crochet through. The top two for the first and last stitch. So I'm going to turn my work again, go right back into that same stitch, single crochet, and then working back down my chain, again, only back loops. So I've reached the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and decrease again. So I'm going to single crochet two together, turn my work, go into that first stitch and then work back up my chain again, back loops only. And this is how we will continue for our entire cuff until we get all the way back to the beginning. So I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you back there. All right, so I have reached the end of my last row. I've gone all the way around. So this is what my sleeve looks like with the ribbing. So now we're going to connect the two sides. So there are a few ways that you could do this. Um, if you would like to just tie off and sew them together, you can totally do that. I am just going to single crochet them together. You could also slip stitch or flat slip stitch if you would like to. It's really just personal preference, but I am just going to single crochet all the way down, trying to match them up as best as I can, but the ribbing is honestly super forgiving, so even if it's not totally perfect, that's okay. So I'm at the bottom now and I'm just going to tie off. So I'm going to single crochet and then cut off 
my working yarn. So this is what my sleeve looks like now. With a nice cuff. And we are done with the sleeve completely. So now we're going to start working on the back panel. So this is just to make the sweater fit more comfortably, give some room for our neck and add any um, extra room we need so that it fits as tight or as loose as we would like it to. So I turned my sweater over. This is the side that I would like to be the back. So I'm going to go to the bottom corner, insert my hook, make a slip knot, and put that on my hook. Now I'm going to chain three. Now I'm going to double crochet twice into this same spot to create a cluster of three. Now without chaining, I'm going to go into the next spot and place another cluster of three double crochets. And into the next spot again, another cluster of three double crochets, and I will keep going all the way until the top corner and I'll meet you back there. So now I've reached the top and I'm on this last corner, so I'm just going to place three double crochets to make my last cluster of this row. Now I'm going to chain three. Turn my work and go into this next space and keep going with three double crochets in each space until I get down to the bottom of the row and then I will show you how to end this one and we'll keep going. So I'm coming to the end of my second row so I'm just going to continue with my cluster in the last space and then to end off this row I'm going to place one double crochet in the top of that first chain three. And that is how we will make our back panels. I am only going to do two rows on my back panel but you can continue or do as many or as few rows as you would like until it fits your body the way that you would like it to. So now I am going to tie off and you will do this all one more time to make the other side of your cardigan. So once you have done that, I will show you how to put them together and we're also going to add a ribbing around the bottom, which is totally optional. If you would like to just keep it this way, you can totally do that as well. So once you do all of this one more time, I'll meet you back here. So I'm finishing up my second half. I did just want to note, because I've made this mistake before, when you are adding the back panel on your second half, just double check and make sure that you're adding it to the side that will be the back so that you don't accidentally end up with two left sides or two right sides, um, just as a reminder. All right, so I have finished both sides of my cardigan, added my two rows on each side for the back panel. Now it's time to connect them. I will have them both right side out, take the backs and line them up, grab my yarn, make a slip knot, put the slip knot on my hook, 
go in through the top and then again in through the top and then slip stitch them together so we are going to be connecting these the same way that we connected our sleeves so now I'm going to place a cluster in this space here of three double crochets then find the next space on this side going through the top slip stitch and then place another cluster here then again in through the top and slip stitch and then another cluster so I'm going to continue this pattern all the way up the back So I am placing my last slip stitch in this last space and now we are done joining them. I'm going to bind off. So now our two pieces are connected. So this is what my sweater looks like now. So if you like the length and just how it looks now, you can just be finished. You don't have to do any more if you would like to add length, which I am not going to do with this cardigan, but you will just do what we did with the back panels, going into a corner and adding a row, going just back and forth around the bottom the way that we did going up and down with our back panels. So for this cardigan, I'm going to finish it off by adding some ribbing around the bottom and maybe going up the inside. I'm gonna play that one by ear, but I'll show you how to get started with going around the bottom and adding ribbing. So I'm going to start on the ribbing for the bottom. I'm actually going to switch out into a smaller crochet hook. I'm using a five millimeter. I did everything else in seven millimeter. Um, so I just sized down a few sizes. You can definitely do this for the sleeves as well if you want to for the cuff. I usually do. I honestly just forgot for this one, but it's no big deal. It just gives you a little bit of a more tightly woven kind of look, but it's no big deal if you don't want to or if you would prefer a chunkier ribbing. Totally up to you. So to do the ribbing at the bottom, I'm going to do it almost exactly the way that I did the ribbing on the sleeves. So I'm going to slip knot, stick that on my hook, and I'm going to chain however long I want the ribbing to be. So I think that's good. I did six. So now just like the sleeves, I'm gonna turn and do back loop only all the way down. So now this is where it will be slightly different. I'm just going to single crochet into the next space here and then turn my work and go into back loops only all the way back up. Then turn my work and then back loops only all the way back down and single crochet into the next stitch. And I'm just going to keep going in this pattern up and down in the back loops all the way around. Okay, so I'm on my last row 
of the ribbing at the bottom. So I'm going to go all the way back down like I have been following my pattern. So I'm going to go into this last single crochet. So I'm going to stop here. So you can be finished here with your cardigan and just start weaving in your ends and leave it as it is. I'm going to go ahead and just do a row of single crochets just up the side of the inside of the opening of my cardigan just to kind of bring it together and tie everything in but that's totally optional. You don't have to do that. But that is the last thing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to single crochet and then we are finished. So I just tied off and that is where we end. That is our last step of our granny hexagon cardigan. This is what mine looks like. So now the last thing that we need to do is go through and just weave in the ends but that is the finished project.